ahead and start. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Russell Chavon, and I'm with AARP. I'm a community ambassador, and um, I've been giving uh, the Prepare to Care <clears throat> excuse me, presentations. Probably this is an updated version, but I've been giving them for about three or four years now. And today's discussion is all about supporting you and your loved ones. I invite you to share your ideas, ask questions, and connect with other family caregivers on this on this uh, Zoom call or people, they're all just people just like you. So if you go on to the bottom of your screen and you click on the chat icon, it'll bring up your Zoom chat page and you could ask questions or to everyone in the group or choose to ask a question to anybody if you hit the uh, little down arrow and you can send private messages too. Um, caring for family members or close friends is one of the most important roles you'll play. It may start with driving your loved one to get groceries or going to the doctor. As time goes by, you may find yourself taking more time off from work, preparing meals or handling bills. No matter where you are in the journey of family caregiving, just beginning to anticipate a need Helping to coordinate a big move or taking care of family members full time have a good framework to help guide both you and your loved one will make the process that much easier. Now I have a, a little bit of uh, information I'd like to share with everybody and about um, caregiving in the state of Virginia. It's more than 1 million family caregivers in Virginia help their loved ones to live independently keeping them out of more costly nursing homes and saving taxpayer dollars. That's 1 million people currently in Virginia taking care of a loved one. In Virginia, family caregivers provide 956 million hours of unpaid care valued at $11.8 billion annually. In 2019, family caregivers spent on an average of nearly $7,000 per year out of their own pocket or about 20% of their income when caring for a loved one. So that's a lot of good information, but um, if you're a caregiver, then you know that you're not alone, that there's a lot of people out there that are in the same boat as you. Okay. <clears throat> Can we go back one slide, please? Thank you. When it comes to caring for a loved one, most families don't have a plan until a problem or a crisis emerges. People can now expect to live 20 to 30 years beyond the traditional retirement age of 65. Now more than ever, it is important to, pick, to prepare for the future so you can better meet the demands of caregiving. During this session, we will share a framework to help you make plans to care for family members, neighbors, and friends. You will have the opportunity to connect with other family caregivers, exchange tips and advice, and learn about resources available to you and your loved ones. Next slide. AARP's Prepare to Care Guide is available for free from our AARP call center or for easy download to your desktop so you can update with your personal information. This Prepare to Care Guide which I use all the time, we'll, reference, we'll, we'll be referencing it throughout the uh, session today, and I'll provide website links and a call center number a little later on in the presentation. Next. Okay, before we get started, I'm gonna take um, about a, a few minutes to show a, a short presentation done by AARP. It's called Stepping Up stories of jazz and caregiving and it's a short film that showcases the powerful and emotional stories of african-american uh, family caregivers this film's stories bring to light the challenge many challenges many of us face while supporting on meeting the demanding challenging challenges of caregiving the caregivers stories selected for the documentary cover a variety of issues commonly found among african-american caregivers for many of us, it's a struggle to balance the different types of roles we fill in our everyday lives. If you go to videosaarp.org and insert stepping up into the search box, the entire 17 minute documentary will show up at the bottom. 
We're going to take a short look at that right now. Oh, before you begin, um, I just want to pop in and, and just say hello. Before we get started, I have to pop off. So, um, but this is, my name is Natalie Pennywell. I'm with the um, VCU Health Hub at 25th. And I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for, for coming and being with us today. I know you're going to enjoy the content. I'll come back around towards the end. Um, but I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if you have any questions, issues, concerns, or anything about how we can support you as you um, move forward in your health journey, please don't hesitate to connect with the VCU. See you health up at 25th. All right, sorry, go ahead. Hello, rise and shine. That's just a brief story. If you want to see more, like I said, go to videos.aarp.org and search for Stepping Up if you'd like to see the entire uh, presentation. Now, to help you get a picture of today's family caregiver, let me ask you a few questions. And if you'd like, you can type in the little chat box down there along the bottom of the screen uh, if any of these things apply to you right now. Number one, do you Help a loved one with household tasks, such as cleaning, laundry, or yard work. Do you help a loved one with medications? Do you regularly cook or provide foods for a loved one? Do you drive to doctor's appointments, make shopping trips, or run other errands? Do you provide personal care, such as bathing or dressing? Do you help with a loved one's finances or pay their bills? Do you provide emotional support and companionship? Do you communicate with health professionals and coordinate health care? Let me check the chat box. Okay, Dora said that she said yes. So at least we, we have somebody there that's a caregiver. And I've been a caregiver in the past and I think just about everybody's gonna experience at least once in their lifetime, if not being one that's cared for. Next slide, please. Caregiving may be one of the most important roles you will ever take on in your life. AARP's founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus, was a caregiver to her parents. In fact, she left her job to care for her mother. She said, it is only in the giving of oneself to others that we truly live. The human contribution is the essential ingredient. Dr. Andrus was an educator and her passion was to help older Americans lead life, lives of independence, dignity, and purpose. 
She founded the National Retired Teachers Association in 1947 and later AARP in 1958. Caregiving is in AARP's DNA. AARP supports family caregivers and their loved ones both directly through programs and online resources and more indirectly through state and federal advocacy. Next slide. Let's first take a minute for a short exercise. For every task that I read, I want you to grab something that is around you right now. Maybe you're listening to this session in your kitchen or in your office, so grab something that is on the table or on your desk. Pick up one item for each time I read one of the following statements. I will say mom or dad, but encourage you to think about the person you are caring for, not necessarily your mother or father. Okay. One, take mom or dad to medical appointments. Two, pick up a prescription. Three, organize and help ensure mom takes her medication. Four, call the insurance company. Five, shop for groceries. Six, cook meals. Seven, mow mom's lawn. Eight, do laundry and clean mom's house. Nine, bathe and dress mom. 10, go to work. 11, pick up the kids from soccer. 12, pay mom's bills. 13, take the kids to school. 14, take mom to the beauty shop. 15, change mom's bandages three times a day. That's a lot of stuff, but that's the kind of things that caregivers do. Now, how many items have you got in your arms right now when you're trying to juggle all these things and get through your day? That's the kind of things that, that caregivers do, and that's the kind of things they have to think about. Anybody want to make any comments about all the responsibilities of a caregiver? Please put them in the, in the chat box. Okay. Um, here's some facts about caregiving, which shows it really affects everyone. Family caregivers provide the majority of long-term care in the United States. The average family caregiver is a 49-year-old woman who works 35 hours a week and provides almost 24 hours of care per week. That's the average. There's more than 42 million family caregivers each year provide care for aging parents, spouses, aunts, uncles, friends, and other loved ones. Caregiving affects the whole family. Men are, are now almost as likely to say they are family caregivers as women. Right now it's 40% men and 60% women. Traditionally, women have always been looked upon to be the caregivers, but that seems to be changing. And even 24% of younger Americans age 18 to 34 say they are currently family caregivers. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're gonna talk about um, some practical information to help you care for your loved one while also being best caring for yourself too. We'll break this down into five steps. Number one, start the conversation. Number two, form your team. Number three, make a plan. Number four, find support. And number five, care for yourself. Next slide. Step one, start the conversation. Often families avoid discussions about the future simply because they don't want to think about the changes in the lives of the people that they're most loved. Many people wait until a crisis occurs before they talk about their values and preferences, wishes for health care, or details about their finances. It's never easy to bring up what you'll think will be an uncomfortable topic. However, a lot of uncertainty can be avoided if you talk with your loved one before a crisis occurs. It is easy to put off these conversations because they can be difficult. Plus, we are busy but you may be surprised to find out that your loved one has been meeting to have the talk too. Next slide. Before you start the conversation, here are some things to consider. Look for an opening. When raising the topic of future care, you may find it helpful to reference an article you just read or something you saw on the news just to break the ice. 
For example, I'm starting to think about estate planning. Do you have any advice? Or here's another example. I just read an article about gathering all your important papers. Sometime, can you show me where all of yours are and what you'd like us to do just in case there's an emergency? If you have any other good ideas for breaking the ice, please type them in the chat box. Try not to anticipate what your loved one might say or how they will react. Just get the conversation started. Be open, express your love and concern, and most importantly, listen. Keep in mind that the conversation will likely take place over time. Respect your loved one's wishes. Make sure your loved one is participating in the conversation as much as possible. It's important to center your caregiving plan on the wishes of the person receiving the care. Where do they want to live? How do they want to handle their finances? Make sure you get their input. It's very important. Size up the situation. Once you get the conversation going, evaluate what you're hearing. Understanding your loved one's priorities, where they want to live, and the nature of their care will help determine the next steps. Next slide. Next slide, please. I'm sorry, it's frozen for a second, but okay. <laughs> I'll catch up. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're gonna talk about reviewing finances. Money can be a particularly sensitive subject to talk about, but it's often at the heart of many decisions you'll have to make with your loved one. You have to consider how you're going to pay for housing, health care and other expenses, groceries, medications, transportation, etc. Ask your loved one to review their bank accounts, investments, insurance coverage, and other relevant finances, assets or income that can be used to cover these costs. Find out whether they have long-term care insurance in case they need it. Next slide. You may find that your loved one's initial response to your attempt to start the conversation is something like, I just don't want to talk about it. Keep in mind that some people are private by nature. Sometimes it's difficult for someone to admit they need help, and as a result, you may encounter some resistance. If your first conversation doesn't go well, try it again. If you're still running into difficulty, try asking a trusted family friend doctor or faith leader to share your concerns. Here are a few questions. How would you approach a loved one who just doesn't want to talk about it? Give that some thought. <clears throat> have you had success approaching a loved one who initially was reluctant to have a conversation about their health and finances? How did it go? Did it go well? Did you put it off to a later date and try to talk about it again? Those are the kind of things that you need to think about. Next. <clears throat> the next step is to form your team. Caring for a family member or friend can be too big of a job for just one person. Trying to do everything yourself may lead to burnout and problems with your own health and well being. It's important to form a larger network of family and friends and tap into community resources to share the load. Your loved one can help you identify willing team member, members such as neighbors or friends from the faith community. You may not have thought of those people on your own, so it's always good to ask if there are alternative people other than family members that the, your loved one would like to include. Next slide. <clears throat> Look for team members who live nearby. Proximity has its advantages, such as stopping over just to drop by and check on a loved one or driving to a doctor's appointment or just cooking a meal. Just because somebody, does, but otherwise, just because somebody doesn't live close by uh, doesn't mean they don't have a lot of, of free time or that they can't pitch in. Family or friends living at a distance can help with tasks such as coordinating meal, meals, 
bill, bill paying or financial assistance. Okay, look for people that can help with simple tasks. Don't be, ask, don't be hesitant to ask others for help. Some people may, may need only a little encouragement to take on a task and are glad when you do ask for help. Share the talents. Leverage the talents and strengths of your team. For example, the computer whiz in the family could set up an online calendar for coordinating meals or chores, or somebody who loves to garden might be willing to help out with a loved one's yard. Your loved ones can help identify these team members. Neighbors and friends, friends from their church, uh, just you know, have them get the input from, from the loved one. Next page, please. Okay, building and supporting your team. Determine the number of team members. Both quantity and quality are important to think about when building your team. While having a large caregiving team can be helpful, too many people may be unwieldy to manage. Make sure everybody on the team is clear about their responsibilities. They should be supportive and willing to lend a hand and to your loved one. Uh, assign roles and responsibilities. Everyone has something to contribute. Uh, play, to, play to each person's strength and be clear on what's needed and expected. Uh, focus on the care recipient. The key and often overlooked participant in the conversation who is the person who needs the care. Barring mental or physical incapacity other, or other extraordinary circumstances, the person receiving the care should play a significant role in determining who should be on the team and what, what jobs they need to perform. Next slide, please. Step three is to make a plan. Now that you have your team filled with willing caregivers, it's time to start building out a plan and designing and designating responsibilities. Always make sure your plans are being made with the person you are caring for at the center of the discussion. The plan doesn't have to be extensive or fancy. You can never anticipate every detail or scenario, so don't make it too detailed. The plan should include immediate needs as well as plans for the future. Keep in mind that options for addressing needs will depend on finances, the willingness of your, your support team, and the resources available in your, in your community. Next slide. Are we stalled again? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and we're still talking about making a plan. Hold a team meeting. A family meeting is one way to keep, uh, to help you get things organized and ensure that all of your team members are on the same page when it comes to making and keeping the plan. First, meet with your caregiving team. This may take place over a conference call, a Zoom meeting, or through a series of emails. Determine what works best for all of you. Next, assess the goals and needs of your caregiving plan. Remember, this doesn't have to be an extensive or fancy plan, as long as you, you know, because you can't anticipate every, everything that's gonna crop up in the future. Just try to include immediate needs and broader plans, you know, for what may come up down the road. And you can use the prepare to care guide. We offer an assessment of goals and needs on pages 23 through 33. You can see how we have listed typical tasks in the area of home maintenance, health finances, transportation, and more. Once you determine your goals, delegate all those responsibilities. It's time to figure out who will do what and make sure that you determine what task everybody is comfortable doing. Also be sure to ask your team members about their preferences of what they would like to do. Okay, here are some helpful tips to remember during your team meeting. The family member who will receive the care should play a significant role in talking about and assigning roles and tasks. For example, if one child is an accountant, an older parent may feel more comfortable having another child look after their financial affairs. It's important to communicate. 
Try and keep everyone informed as things change. Make sure that everyone knows about the discussion ahead of time so, then, so there's no surprises or hurt feelings. One member should take notes and write a brief summary of what was decided. A written summary of the plan helps ensure that the wishes and needs of your loved one have been considered and included. And it's also important to make sure everybody, you know, understands what was talked about completely. And it's good to write it down for that reason. Next page. Okay. Drink time then. <clears throat> Are we still stalled, stall, Janae? Okay. Yes. So I'll stop sharing and uh, you'll go ahead and keep talking. Okay, we'll go to step four then. If you've come to realize that the scope of care needed for your loved one is beyond what you or your team can provide, it's okay to reach out for extra support. There are a number of, number of ways you can obtain the help that you need. Okay, first you can locate your community resources. Your local area agency on aging can help connect you to a variety of support services, such as home delivered meals, transportation, adult daycare, care management, and more. Your local agency on aging also can answer questions about which resources are free and which may have a cost. You can also check into services offered in your community through the elder care locator. The Elder Care Locator is a public service of the U.S. Administration on Aging. It connects caregivers to local services and supports. Any of the resources I mentioned today are in your, in your Prepare to Care Guide. The Elder Care Located is listed on page 21. Okay. Consult a professional. Oftentimes your loved one's needs can be complex, especially when health, emotional, and financial issues are at play. A trained social worker or nurse, or nurse can help you sort things out, to determine what is needed, find services, and arrange care. Again, the elder care locator listed on page 21 is a great resource for you to find such professionals. I encourage you to highlight this resource in your book. Next page. Okay. If you have a spouse, sibling, parent, or other loved one in a nursing home, you may be worried about their safety and well being because of the coronavirus pandemic. This is a brand new slide that Janae created just for this presentation today, only because of the timeliness of it. Okay. There are six questions you should ask if your loved one is in a nursing home. AARP has consulted with leading nursing home experts to provide you with some key questions to ask the nursing home. Number one, has anyone in the nursing home tested positive for COVID-19? This includes residents as well as staff or other vendors who may have been in the nursing home. Number two, what is the nursing home doing to prevent infections? How are nursing home staff being screened for COVID-19, especially when they leave and re-enter the home? What precautions are in place for residents who are not in private rooms? The third question, does, does, nursing homes, does the nursing home staff have the personal protective equipment like masks, face shields, gowns, and gloves that are needed to stay safe and to keep the patients safe? Have nursing home staff been given specific training on how to use this PPE? If no, what is the plan to obtain personal protective equipment that they need? Question number four, 
What is the nursing home doing to help residents stay connected with their families or other loved ones during this time? Does the nursing home help residents call their loved ones by phone or video call? Will the nursing home set up a regular schedule for you to speak with your loved one? <clears throat> question, question five, what is the plan for the nursing home to communicate important information to both residents and families on a regular basis? Will the nursing home be contacting you by phone or email and when? Question six, is the nursing home currently at full staffing levels for nurses, aides, and other workers? What is the plan to make sure the needs of nursing home residents are met, like bathing, feeding, medication management, and social engagement, if the nursing home should happen to have staffing shortages? Okay, if you are, if you are concerned, You're concerned about the safety and well-being of a spouse, parent, or other loved one who, who happens to live in a nursing home, contact the Virginia Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program at 1-804-565-1600 or at 1-800-552-3402. You'll have to pardon my voice. I'm not used to speaking for this long at a time because I'm usually home by myself most of the day. Okay, we're, we're going, back, going back for uh, tips for, to find support and some more ideas. You could hire help. If you see that your loved one needs help with daily activities, try exploring home care options. Some home care workers do household tasks such as cleaning and meal preparation while others do more personal care tasks such as bathing and dressing. Your local agency on aging can help you identify and connect with the appropriate services. You can also go online and visit AARP's Caregiving Resource Center, and that's at aarp.org caregiving for more information. You wanna secure their safety. To help your loved one be safe and comfortable in their home, try incorporating handrails, grab bars, night lights, or adjustable shower seats. You can also check out AARP's Home Fit Guide at aarp.org slash home fit for a whole range of solutions. I, I encourage you to write down that website. Again, that was aarp.org slash home fit. That's one word, H-O-M-E-F-I-T, uh, because it really does give you a lot of good ideas on how to refit your home to stay in there longer. Uh, you can explore other housing options also, a variety of housing, with supportive services may be available in your community. Begin by making a list of criteria such as location, group dining, laundry services, and more. Once you determine the criteria you need, visit several facilities and be sure to talk to residents and their families. For more information on housing options, go online and visit AARP's Caregiving Resource Center. The web address is on the back cover of your guidebook. If you are considering a nursing home, go to Medicare's nursing home compare page at medicare.gov slash nursing home compare. There is a detailed information about every Medicare and Medicaid certified nursing home in the country. And that's at medicare.gov and you can check out the ratings of all of the uh, care facilities in your area should you need to check it out. Um, in addition to giving uh, talks about caregiving. I'm also a VICAP counselor in the state of Virginia, and I use that website uh, almost every day because I am still doing uh, Medicare counseling over the phone, even though I can't meet with clients in person. And that Medicare uh, compare page on medicare.gov is uh, very useful for seeing how good nursing homes are and how, where, why they're not so good. Okay, next page, please. 
Okay, this is uh, the last step, step number five, and it's a very important one, and a lot of people tend to forget about this, and that is to care for yourself. Um, don't overlook the impact of caregiving on you. Pay attention to your health and to your well being. The best way to ensure that you have the energy to care for a loved one is to first take care of yourself. Here are some tips tap, tap into resources. Social workers, nurses, and other professionals can guide you through care options and help monitor the care if you don't live nearby. Use technology, personal emergency response systems, remote monitoring devices, and mobile apps can help you coordinate care. Ask your employer. Some employers offer health benefits or services to support family caregivers. Review, review finances. It's important to calculate your caregiving related expenses and account for them in your personal budget. You wouldn't believe how much you might spend by being a family caregiver. You could also talk to your doctor. Let them know you are a caregiver and discuss ways to manage stress. You should also consult with your loved one's doctor for training if you are expected to do complex medical tasks in their home. Take advantage of caregiving services and support. Services and support groups can help you throughout your caregiving journey. And lastly, take a break. Make time for yourself. Time for exercise, sleep, healthy eating, and staying connected with your friends and family. Next slide. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about resources. We've talked about the five steps of prepare to care. So if you can follow all five of those, give yourself a hand. But this is just the beginning. AARP offers a variety of online information, resources, in person events, and self paced learning for all family caregivers. I want to be sure to mention these two resources. The first one is AARP's Caregiving Resource Center, and that's up on the left of your screen. That's a picture of what it would look like. It's a central hub for all things caregiving at AARP. You can read the latest articles, tips, and advice, and that's where you'll also find the Prepare to Care guide with downloadable checklists from when you need to update or revise your caregiving plan. It's this book here. I've given away probably thousands of them in my other presentations and at um, other you know, senior events around the state. There's also, you know, uh, and what's great about this book is towards the back from pages 20, 21, and 22, it's nothing but resources that you can use if you're a family caregiver and it's invaluable. You could also call a toll free number 1 877 333 5885. And that's a caregiving hotline. It's open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. The, you know, the, that number is also on the back of the Prepare to Care Guide. Okay. Another resource from AARP is their Learn at 50 website. And you can visit this site to learn about events going on around you. Explore, explore uh, educational vin, uh, videos and webinars about caregiving. And you could also uh, download the Prepare to Care resource guide and checklist from this site. And that is aarp.org slash learn at 50 plus, just like it says on the screen. I would also like to remind you that your Prepare to Care guide has a variety of resources like I talked about on those pages. Okay, next slide, please. Only two more to go. Let's not, let's not bum out on it now. <laughs> you go ahead and keep talking. Okay, I will keep talking because there's not much to look at on these slides. It's mostly me just talking anyway. 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from what I was able to tell you today. Um, and I hope it you know, brought some value to your afternoon. It's important to prepare for your loved one future and your own longevity so that we can live the best life possible. Um, you're going to be receiving, um, let's see, it's a, uh, and a survey that's going to be me emailed to you. They're going to have your email from your registration. Uh, and it's a survey monkey. It's a quick uh, little survey. And I'd appreciate it if you would fill it out so we can get some feedback on this session. And I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions or would like to make any comments, please feel free to use the chat box which you can hook into on the bottom of your screen, or if Janaea maybe wants to unmute everybody, they can ask, actually ask questions. I actually, don't know they if they can, can unmute, unmute themselves. Them. Oh, I'm sorry, Russell. They can unmute themselves at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you have them. a question and you'd like to speak up, you know, go to the bottom left of your screen and you should see a mute and unmute button down there. But if everybody's happy with what I've presented, that's fine too. I have a question. This is Natalie from the Health Hub. Right. Um, where can they find additional resources to support what you spoke about today? Okay, uh, we can go to several resources at AARP. Uh, I'd say aarp.org slash caregiving. And that's, or they can call 1-877-333-5888. They can find out all about resources. And like I said, there's three pages of resources in the Prepare to Care guide. And um, that can be downloadable, or if they call that number and would like a hard copy, I'm sure somebody at the at, at, uh, at aarp.org slash caregiving will be glad to mail them a copy. Or if they come to any senior expos throughout the area, um, Janaea and her and her well-trained volunteers in Central Virginia. Will, I'm sure they'll have these on the table. Well, Jana thank you, Russell, so much. Okay. Um, the, if nobody else has any other questions, um, I'll give Janae an opportunity to, to speak and then I'll close us out if that works for everybody. Okay, Janae, are you with us? Oh, she froze a little bit. <laughs> you can unmute yourself, Janae. She might have to come back. It's a really great phrase too. It's not a, <laughs> it's a great picture. Um, well, as she prepares to probably come back to us, um, I will let you all know that this is the first in a four-part series, um, and we've been really working on it um, a lot lately, and we're very excited about all the different opportunities. Um, there goes, she came back, yay. <laughs> all the opportunities for you all to join us again. It will continue for the next four weeks, starting this week um, at 12.30 on Tuesdays. Um, and Janae, do you want to give them the topics for the next three weeks, or do you want me to roll through them? Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so, um, so I'll go ahead and roll through the topics for you. Um, we do want it, we wanted to make sure that um, you were able to get what you needed throughout, and we wanted to make sure that you had um, all the information in order to be successful. And so this week was about caregiving. Um, and then next week, I just want to make sure I have these correct. Um, we've had so many different emails that come through. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. Uh, perfect. Okay. Next week will be um, the topic of the six pillars of brain health um, with Mike. Dear Solo, 
and I think I pronounced that completely incorrectly. Um, on the on that's for June second. For June 9th from at twelve thirty, there will be diabetes in the African American community, um, and then probably just a little snippet of blood sugar rising and talking with um, a health professional about what does it look like, how can we make sure we manage things, and any of those um, top of mind questions that you may have. The fourth week we're going to be with Michelle Evans Oliver and talking through fraud and identity, and so we really want to see each one of you back. We would love to grow the audience each week. Um, and every week I'm going to try my best to get it so that we can do some live streaming, streaming um, with working now. It's not working as technology goes. Um, and, um, and we want to make sure that we're answering any relevant questions that you may have. So feel free to reach out to us at any point for that. Um, if that's all, um, Jenny, do you have anything else that you want me to share or anything else that they need? We just want to say thank you. I've had to log in with a different device. Uh, this is our first time trying to work together. Uh, Russell again is from Roanoke and Natalie is in Richmond and I am in Alexandria. So through the blessing of technology, we've been able to try to sync up devices and sync up information as well as sync up our passion, our passion for staying connected to the community. So tell a friend for next Tuesday. Hopefully we'll have a few more and we'll have less computer freezing <laughs> and computer glitches. But thank you, Russell, for all that you do and being a community ambassador and being willing to share. All right. And, and this recording will go. Oh, you. I'm sorry, Russell. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, hold on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I noticed that you recorded this. Is that going to be available for people? Yes, yeah, we're that be so um, the recording will go up probably in the next 24 to 48 hours. It depends on how long it takes our team to get it up. Um, and then once the when it sits up um, in ADA compliant in some way, um, we will make sure um, to send that information out to you who have registered and then we'll pass it along and make sure it's posted on both of our social media pages as well. And, um, and any other avenue from which it needs to be distributed so people can take a look. And um, I don't have a plan to pull it down anytime soon. So anytime anybody wants to view it, please do so. so. All right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you all for participating today. And have a great afternoon. Have a great one. Thank you. Thanks.